the Joe Rogan experience. Mm. How do you navigate this, Tulsi? It seems like the, it seems like, okay, if you want to get the Democratic nomination, you've got to be pretty far to the left, right? But if you want to actually win the presidency, then you've got to be more moderate. So that seems like a tough little thing to try and get through as well. I mm. think that that is the conventional so-called wisdom um, that just isn't true anymore. I think this is what, you know, you hear a lot of the political pundits talking who's far left, who's centrist, moderate, who's this, this, that. Um, I think what's what's proving to be true is is more about, you know, who is... Um, who is who's the establishment candidate versus who is anti-establishment and that you know i i don't fit into any one of those boxes because i look at every issue based on its merits i'll look at the substance of the issue look at the arguments for and against and go with the approach that i think this actually, is a, this is a radical idea. It right? is, is that, exactly. It's radical to be reasonable. Exactly, and that's the thing. Like these people, they're like, "Oh my God, we can't figure her out because she she doesn't have any of these labels." Um, but but that is where the vast majority of the American people are. You have these these extremes on the fringes who are all about these uh, you know purity tests where you are either with me on every single issue or you're done, you're finished, you're unacceptable. But the vast majority of Americans, again, they're looking at w what is real leadership, real leadership, whether you're talking about the guy who's wor working in the manufacturing warehouse, or you're talking about a blue collar worker, you're looking at, okay, here's, here's, the, the, here's the issues that keep most people up at night. You know, you want to make sure that if your kid is sick, that you're going to be able, they're they're going to be able to get the health care they need. You want to make sure you have a roof over your family's head. There, there are basic things. Uh, approaching them in a way that is pragmatical, com pragmatic, common sense, uh, and solutions oriented um, is not only the right thing to do, I think it's the thing that makes it so you don't have to say, well, in the primary, I'm only going to talk to Democrats and the most radical and extreme among them. And then I'm totally going to flip the script and then speak to the whole country after I win the primary election. That's that's ridiculous. This is why, you know, I'll, I'll go on Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, and I'm delivering the exact same message to people. And we're, we're building and growing support in people who watch those three different channels who are actually listening like, hey, like she, she makes sense. Like she's not crazy. She's not spouting some party talking point. She's not, you know, going down a radical path just to appeal to the the Twitter winds that are blowing one way or the other. It's mm. just about hey, let, let's do what's what's best. Let's do what's best for the people and for the country. I'm stunned by the blowback too for you going on Fox News. That people yeah. are actually upset that they they do not think that you should grace this the, the the Fox News screens. Yeah, that you you're doing a disservice to your party. Yeah, which is interesting. Well, I get the same stuff and because I go on Fox News and why do I go on Fox News? Fox News invites me on to Fox News. You know who's never invited me on ever? MSNBC. <laughs> MSNBC. <laughs> and again, as you pointed out yeah. earlier, like it's pretty hard to pin me down politically. Right. Yeah. And I'm not one to sit there and try and make radical statements to try and get more, you know, likes on a t Twitter thing. You, you don't do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's like, oh, I'm here to trying to make some points about the way you know most of, most of what i talk about is is about leadership yeah you know? it's like oh because what we're doing as human beings is we're leading other people whether it's just your family or whether it's your business or whatever or it's troops out in the field so yeah it's weird that you would get attacked for going on fox news when actually anybody that looks at that from a strategic view would think oh she's actually accepted by by this this right wing um, news organization, maybe she could get some other you know moderate conservative votes. Maybe right. we should think about bringing her in a, as a candidate because she could win. Right. Well, not, <laughs> not only that, what's wrong with going on stage or going on camera with someone that you oppose, someone you Nothing. disagree with, and having a dialogue about what you disagree with? Right. That's the weird thing about this cancel culture, this strange time we're living in. You're not even supposed to communicate with people about <laughs> ideas that you disagree on. Yeah. Like I, or, I saw or, people criticizing you for being on Tucker Carlson's yeah. show in particular. Yeah. And, and that's what I was going to say, you know, yeah, it's one thing to say, okay, you're going to go on Fox News and, you know, tussle with Sean Hannity about things you disagree on. But I think what they see as more dangerous is finding areas where you actually do agree. Right. right. And that's, you know, on Tucker Carlson. Um, I have a platform to be able to speak to millions of people across the country about the kind of leadership that I bring in the area of foreign policy. 
what I would do here in this country, what I would do there in that country if I were president today. And I have the opportunity to deliver that message directly to people's living rooms or offices or wherever they are. And, um, you know, I think in some of these areas, Tucker, Tucker and I will disagree on a whole host of things, but on some of these issues of foreign policy, he'll say, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think when you look at this, this cancel culture, how, you know, I was attacked on the debate stage for going on Fox News. How do you think you're going to lead this country, all Americans, if you're completely not only shutting out and not willing to talk to half the country that watches Fox News, but you're in fact disrespecting and dismissing them just because they may disagree with you or they watch a different news channel than you do. I think that's the bigger issue here is, yeah, you know, there's a political consequence. You're never going to be able to have a dialogue with what to speak of win support from people who you treat like garbage, who you disrespect, who you call names, who you call deplorables. <clears throat> but yeah. how do you expect to lead as the president of every single American in this country when you've thrown half of them away and saying, you know what, I actually don't care about you. I only care about people who I agree with. That's that's to me the the um, the worst part about all of this. Yeah, those, I couldn't agree more. Those uh, the, that deplorable thing yeah. was a big hit. And then you also remember when Mitt Romney said, "Hey, there's 47 percent of the country that there's no way of voting for him, yeah. so yeah. we just need Whoops. to forget about him." Yeah, exactly. So those two those two things completely divided and sent people to vote for the opposing candidate. Like you're yeah. gonna call me deplorable? Oh, really? Watch this. Right. I'm voting for. Or Donald you're Trump. gonna ignore me, or you're just gonna yeah. dismiss me. Or my vote doesn't know. matter. I yeah. think yeah. also it yeah. speaks to what both people have that is distasteful that they're calculated. And one of the things that I do appreciate you uh, about you is that I think you're not. I think the way you view things is you would far rather speak your mind and be truthful mm -hmm. and have real legitimate opinions on things rather than have some weird, slimy, sort of shifty take that's been created by a bunch of people that think that this is going to be the right thing that you could say that's going to you know, and get you a little closer in the polls and move you this way and move the needle that way. That, that shifty style of politics, I really feel, is dead. I, I just I just don't think you can do it that way anymore. I think people, because of the open access to information that people have today and the, the way that people can communicate and, and find out information, I just don't think we want to buy that shifty politician talk anymore. I think we're done with it. I think we realize it's antiquated. It's, it's never served us. It sucks, and it just it just gives you the same thing every time. You get someone who gets into office, and they do completely different things than what they said they were going to do before mm -hmm. they got in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's even, you know, I thought about, oh, the people are, they heard deplorables, they heard 47%, and that's bad. But yeah, you're right. What it really made people think is, oh, behind the scenes, you're totally different than you are when you're yeah. standing on stage. Yeah, you're yeah. shifty. I know what you're like, and I'm not voting for you. <laughs>